Hello. Okay. Um, you, so you're now you're ready to write the body paragraphs of your essay. There's you need to know how to construct those body paragraphs, but you also need to know how to cite your sources. Okay, so we're we're gonna learn to do two things at once today. Now, I'm gonna give you a formula for writing the body paragraphs. Again, just like I said yesterday with this introductory formula, some of you are advanced enough that you could move beyond this formula. However, for this assignment, I'm going to ask everyone to follow this formula. Okay? Now, I'm going to write in color code, I think. Um, these colors look different enough. Yeah. Okay. Topic sentence, statement, note, commentary. That's the formula. And this formula is going to work for every single research paper you ever have to write. Okay? Once you feel more comfortable writing these types of papers, whether it's literary analysis, a policy paper, a research paper, a report, whatever it is you have to write, when you feel more comfortable, you will be able to deviate from the formula. But if you are just not a good writer, learn it. Make it your friend. Okay? Now, let's break down each of these um, sentences. Your topic sentence. Every good paragraph has a topic sentence. You know this. Y'all learned this in middle school, right? Okay. Your statement. The statement is the point that you are trying to make. Your note is what you get from the book. This is where you're going to learn how to cite your, um, cite your sources. Okay. And then the commentary is why you chose this note and you're tying it to that statement, okay? Let me show you how it works. Now, I'm writing my essay on um, The Great Gatsby. Here we go. Which one am I going to do? The theme of selfish? Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do theme of selfishness on it. Okay. So, my topic sentence, based on my thesis statement, What's the first, who's the first character I'm going to write about? Yeah, I have to write about Daisy first because I wrote her first in my uh, thesis statement. Okay, so my topic sentence is going to have to be some very generic sentence about Daisy being selfish. Okay. That's my topic sentence. One of the most selfish characters in Great Gatsby is Daisy Buchanan. Everything I put in this paragraph is going to be about Daisy and her selfishness. I'm not going to talk about how pretty she is. I'm not going to talk about Tom. I'm not going to mention the fact that Daisy has a child. The only thing I'm going to write about in this paragraph is Daisy's selfishness. So, tell me some ways that Daisy was selfish. Brett? Well, sort of a way. She didn't really care. Not, not, in, the, like, not in a personal care, like a general care. At first she was surprised, right? When she found out uh, Jeff, Jeff this. Being there. Okay. At first, it seemed like she didn't. She actually cared. The whole time that faded. Yeah, she, it would make sense. She was confused, but 
if she didn't go through a normal one of three. Okay, now remember, we're focusing on her selfishness. Ocille, how are you going to add to that? Okay, and I think that is a good follow-up to, to the build-up that Brett was giving us about how she seemed to genuinely care at first, but then she, she didn't, okay? So, Daisy cared as long as it benefited her. Ooh, wow. That's a good statement, isn't it? Daisy's affection for Jay is or was, now remember we talked about historical present yesterday. Why is? That's right. Every time you open the book, Daisy, is, Daisy and Gatsby are having an affair. Daisy's affection for Gatsby is, or instead of is, how about directly? Like if you were correlates, hold on just one second, Brett, okay? To um, her interest. Thank you, Lucille. Okay, Brett, what did you want to add? Nothing. It's just, if you're talking about her while she's, while she learned about his death, like after his death, when it makes sense to you that it was, just because you're talking about that specific point in time in that book, and on um, reflection of a past time in the book. Your 90% rule for historical present, anytime you're writing about the author, author's construction of the book, it's past tense. Anytime you're writing about characters' actions in the book, that's going to be present tense. What and and I'm, I'm going to stop you. Not because I don't want to answer your question, but because I want to make sure that we get through this so you all will have time to work on your essays. Okay? Okay. All right. So, I've got my topic sentence. I now have out my statement. I need a note. i got to go to the book. This is where you use the textual evidence you guys pulled out the other day. You don't use your textual evidence in your introduction. You don't use textual evidence in your conclusion. Okay, the textual evidence is specific to your body paragraph. So, I need my textual evidence is going to be at the end of the luncheon where Gatsby loses his temper. Does anybody remember what Daisy told, what Daisy says? Once Gatsby loses his temper, Daisy looks, looks up and says, Please, Tom, I can't stand this anymore. Why would she speak to Tom? Okay, because Gatsby, the, the attraction to Gatsby has ended. There's no more benefit for her. She's not the man that, that she dreamed he would be. Okay. So, let me grab another color here. How about green? All right, so my note. All right, Daisy, uh, Daisy's affection for Jay directly correlates to her interest. She once gets, uh, once Gatsby loses his temper. Daisy no longer sees him as the ideal man 
period. Again, not great. We're going to, you know, we would revise and make it better, okay? Once Gatsby le loses his temper, Daisy no longer sees him as the ideal man. She turns from him to Tom begging him Tom, I can't stand anymore. Uh, I can't actually, it just says, I can't stand this anymore. All right, now look at what I do here, okay? I'm not putting any quotation, I'm not putting any punctuation right here. Hello, you still there? All right. I'm not putting any punctuation here. All right? Except the quotation mark. The book has a comma there. Or either an exclamation mark. I'm not putting anything. I'm putting open parentheses and the page number I got the book page number from the book, close parentheses, and my period goes here. This is where every single person is going to mess this up. All right? No punctuation. Quotation mark. Parentheses. No PG. No P period. Just the page number. And then the period goes outside of that parentheses. That all goes together. Questions about how to do this. All right. I know some of you are, are a little weirded out. I'm recording our class, what we're doing up here for the people who are absent. Okay. Oh, see you. <clears throat> I could, however. If I do, then I don't have a smooth transition, okay? And you're always, you're always looking for ways to make sure that that one sentence just blends nicely with the next. I mean, it's just a, a sign of mature writing, okay? Now, my commentary, okay? My commentary is going to then explain how this idea of her not being able to stand it anymore connects to her, her interest. Okay? As long as J, as long as J or Gatsby, if I refer to him as J here, I should refer to him as Jay here. I should refer to him as Jay here. You should be consistent. All right? Do what I say do, not what I All right. As long as Jay fits her preconceived image of what is socially and I don't want to say socially acceptable because he's better than acceptable. Okay? No, I don't, no, we, we want to just say what we mean. If, if it's, what's better than acceptable? Um. Socially, I want to say acceptable. What's the word I want? He's not acceptable. He's better than acceptable. I'm not. <laughs> Come on, help me out, help me, help me. As long as Jay fits her preconceived notion or preconceived image of what is socially... I want, but he's he's more than acceptable. 
This isn't the word I specifically want, but I like it better than I like socially perfect, I think. What? What? No, because sufficient's acceptable. I want better than sufficient. Okay? If, you know, think about it this way. If if you kiss your significant other and, and, and she steps back and says, oh, that was sufficient. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what you want, right? <laughs> okay. As long as Jay fits her preconceived image of what is socially outstanding or socially better than everybody else has, then Daisy completes, fulfills her role of the perfect girl. When Jay becomes just another man, she turns from him or she, I've already said that, she turns from him, so I don't want to say that again. Stop. Whatever's going on is really annoying. When Jay becomes just another man, Daisy looks to Tom who has saved her before. Okay. And perhaps I would go on, add another sentence here, another sentence of commentary about how um, Tom saved her when Gatsby didn't come back from the war. Okay. She's looking at Tom to save her. She can't stand on her own. She's got to be the it girl. And since Jay is just another guy, she's got to be the it girl of Tom Buchanan because he's got a lot of money. So those are the those are the thought processes I have here. In my revision, if I were taking longer than five minutes to write this out on the board for you, I would follow that thought process through. But but you see how this works, right? Now, for those of you who don't like writing, look at how easy how easy it was to create this paragraph. And that's by me only saying one thing about Daisy's selfishness. Would have had something else to say about her selfishness. Well, then I'd start another paragraph. My next topic sentence would be, um, Daisy also shows her selfishness in blah, 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 blah. And in that case, my topic sentence and my statement might be the same thing. All right. Does that make sense? Mark, you look confused. You're still trying to figure this part out? I'm stuck on that word. Oh, you still? Word. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mess you up. Dayon. Exceptional. I love that. Yes, that would work. Exceptional. Can we, can we change that now? <laughs> Exceptional. As long as Jay fits her preconceived image of what is socially exceptional, well, now, then Daisy you. fulfills her role of the perfect girl. Yes. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> I was feeling very smart. Right? Okay. What are your questions about this formula? Yes, yes, that is correct. Oh, so we're putting our opinion on the other people? Yes. Your opinion, or commentary, is going to explain 
how this note, why you chose this note. How does this textual evidence fit this statement you're making about Daisy being selfish? Or how does this piece of textual evidence fit this statement you said about Candy being emasculated? You got to explain it down here. Okay? Other questions? Well, how many of these formulas do you need? How many characters are you writing about? Well, if you're writing about three, then your very basic minimum is going to be three of these formulas, three of these um, repetitions. Because that would be, you know, this might be my paragraph on Daisy. And then I'd need to do all this again in my paragraph on J. Okay? Does this make sense? I'm only seeing a few nods. Does this make sense? Okay. You've got 30 minutes to work. If you have questions, I'll be glad to come. If you have questions, I will be glad to come look at it. However, in order to help me help you, this is what I want to see. For now, while we're in this drafting phase, I would like to see TS statement note commentary. I want, I want to see TS and then, then your actual topic sentence and then your statement and your actual statement. That is going to help me see what's going on in your head. Okay, if you just show me a paragraph, then I, I'm not going to be quite sure how to help you. If you do this for me, I got you. I, I can, can guide you. Okay? All right. And go. Those of you online, if you have any questions, um, send me an email. Okay? I should have my email up most of the night and then into the weekend. Your final paper is going to be due on Sunday. So you're going to need to make sure everything has been completed by Sunday afternoon. We will work on it in class tomorrow. So if you want to um, contact me about that, I'll be glad to do so. Okay, bye.